Hey Paul, this is the Stunty DM. Uh, this is a Foundry VTT video. Uh, I'm going to be focusing not on combat or the, one of the big modules, but one which I think makes life really easy. Uh, it is called Drag Ruler. Uh, I'm also going to be cheeky, combine this in with two different modules that kind of work in tandem. So that would be Terrain Ruler and Enhanced Terrain Layer. So what these do combined is they allow you to see your distance uh, color coded uh, and that's done by dragging and moving your token. So by core, you kind of have to either count the tiles yourself or switch to the ruler and measure it out. Whereas with drag distance, you can drag tokens out to certain points and it will show you based on your speed. So. I believe it is a 5e module, so it probably it might not work for Pathfinder, but it will say in the module itself. Because uh, I primarily play 5th edition, I only do at the moment, uh, I am focused on 5th edition. Um, but, so the way this works is it will register um, one colour up to your speed limit. Once you go to, say, dashing, it goes to another colour. And then if you reach a point where you cannot get any further, it then goes to a third colour. Um, usually like the traffic lights um, for a colour code. But I'll show you the settings first of all. We want drag ruler. See here. So and you can set it to automatically start. Um, so on this one. So normally you can hit spacebar when you're doing movements to make waypoints. Uh, and you can tell it to drop a waypoint so you know which distance you've gone so if you need to move around something you have that functionality uh, you can show everyone's speed uh, you can also set it so that gm ruler uh, so i have this ticked so my players don't know what i'm planning um, i do play a lot of things relatively open but it's quite useful from my perspective to not give away too much to them if i can sit there and i can measure while they're taking their turns and go okay right i know where you are um historic movement uh, it shows you where you've been in your turn so, uh, i tend to have that off um and here we are look <clears throat> so uh so this picks up what your speed is so on your character sheet um it determines you what attribute to look for um and here's the dash one so for example for a for fifth edition uh, it's times two so for the first one so for example a 30 foot movement which is most characters or um, ancestries and races it will go green for the first 30 feet then yellow for the next 30 and if you go over 30 you can, it'll go red um so this is to show your dash distance really quite useful and I'll show you that now. So if I make sure I have heard of their target. So what you do is you do this and you can see here look it starts counting out your distance and it shows you how far. So you can see on the right drag ruler does show you uh, where you start from and you can just kind of do this and it will show you okay well this is the direction you're going. Like so if you want to do like waypoints you do that. You just hit space and it will calculate those for you. So okay, she wants to dash over here. She's gonna go there. Bam. And then it will do that. All you need to do is you um <clears throat> when you're ready, you let go. So you drag as normal, you left click, hold, and you drag it to way two. When you let go, your token moves its way over there. Um it seems like why is this a why is this a big deal? It's really useful as a visual aid, for, especially for new players. <clears throat> you can tell someone you can move five squares or you can move. Um, you got a 25 foot movement if you're small races or you got 60 or 100. But it's so much easier to just check that. Uh, so that's Drag Ruler. Very simple, very sweet, very sweet and useful. The next one I'm going to show, well, the next two. So... Terrain Ruler is already built in to Drag Ruler. It's basically part of it. Um, it's a separate module, but it works in the same way. 
Uh, what we're going to use on this one is enhanced terrain and layer. <clears throat> so what this does is it allows you to place or mark out an area on the map that is difficult terrain. So rather, because I'm sure everyone's come across it, you say, oh, that part of the map there, that's not difficult terrain. And five minutes later, you forget about it. People go running through it. You're like, oh, shit, yeah. I've, yeah, it's gone now. Um, this, you can map that out already. So you can... Um, it might not work for things you drop quickly unless you can quickly draw on it. But if you're making a map, you can go, okay, well, this is long grass. This is difficult terrain. Uh, this is um, a rock scree. This is impassable terrain. You can do things like that. And again, you can, here's the settings for it. You can have a quick look into yourself. You can change your colors. So here you can show obstacles and um, types of environments, which is quite nice. Um, shows the borders, shows text. And it shows on drag, so that's that one's show that when you drag your token, uh, it will show the where the area it is. Um, so uh, you do get this little button here, uh, terrain layer. When you click on it, it switches to a new set. So you have uh, draw, uh, visible, and delete. And this is the difficulty. So if you wanted something to be extremely difficult, you can ramp this up to being three. If you go for draw now, you'll see what happens. So you get this little kind of bar. What you do is you mark out your points you want. So let's make this area here. There you, go. you double click it, that's the one that's what I was missing. You see it tells you times two. So if I go back to Adlib now, you notice I've come off that and the layer's gone. But if I drag out, if you can see it's there. And the moment you go into here, if you watch the counter, so it's 10 foot, it should be 15. That should be. You see here, it's automatically calculating the distance her moving through and how far it will take her to move through this pathway. And you can do that with um, basically anything. Um, so like I said, if you wanted to ramp it up, so let's go back to this and you go back to here. Uh, if we remove that one, you want it to be what every square is four times movement. So let's draw. Uh, and it does kind of, uh, I believe one of the settings I've put is it times it, does it by uh, snapping. So you go here, see it goes 5 foot and that's 25 foot and that's 45 foot and then it's 50. Um, again, it's a really simple module. It doesn't take much to set up, uh, a bit of more work on your side of DM. But it also means that you can kind of set that terrain level and and have things a bit more interesting rather than just everyone moves dirty. You can go, OK, well, this section is deep snow. You move into this, you kind of sink down to your waist and suddenly you're moving at half speed. Or if you're quick enough and someone casts a spell, then might always do macros. I'm not. I'm not sure on that, but if you're quick enough, you can go, okay, right, you've cast a spell that turns a area terrain into difficult terrain. You can quickly go into here and go map that area out. And it doesn't have to be squares. That's the thing to note. So um, if I wanted to go, okay, well, I want it to be just this. You see, you can draw polygons with it and yeah, someone goes through, so I think it does rely on full squares. No, it just kind of go there, so 15, 25 foot. But it allows you to do that little bit of terrain setup. It will make combats more varied, because then everyone's not moving at 30. If your players are smart about it, they might be able to position themselves across a section of difficult terrain if they've sussed out that it's there. They can then use their advantage and go, okay, you want to come to me. Monsters now start to move through difficult terrain. They have to then dash to get to them. 
and this is all set up already for you. You'd have to worry about it. You'd have to go, oh, well, he dashed this much. You just drag it. The ruler combined with the layer effect, it just tells you all that you need. And I personally think that's really worthwhile. Um, I don't use it as much as I should do. I have used it a few times. I've got a snow map coming up, which I think I'm going to map out um, for my Curse of Strahd game. And I think I'm going to put some sections that are deep snow and just warn the players, give players like a hint and then kind of give them as like a basic battleground kind of um, variation. Just having that thing there where they drop into snow suddenly or they can skirt someone through it. If they need to slow them down, they go on the other side. Like I said earlier, repeat myself. But you get the idea. It is a really nice mo um, trio of modules that work together. You're more likely to use the drag to, uh, drag ruler more often than not. And again, the colors are varied and it does work for different systems. Um, it is definitely something I would recommend and suggest most people use. Um, but yeah, all right. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. If you have anything to say about the video um, or my presentation, or even just comments, uh, it's nice to read comments because I respond to everything. Um, please drop me a message. Um, please like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers.